people uh, invited, talk by our respected Dr. Selvamurthy sir on yoga for everyone, the scientific perspective. I request Dr. Professor Madan Mohanji, the director of CITA and the one who has enabled so many things to happen to say a few words of introduction to those who are coming late and <coughs> introduce Selvamurthy sir and welcome him for the guest lecture. Today in the auspicious day, we had a memorandum of understanding between the MIT University, very famous university in Noida, and, uh, and uh, Balaji Vidya Peet, both in the Soviet universities, is a great knack. And Dr. Uh, uh, Salimurti is there. He is the Chancellor of MIT University, Chhattisgarh, and in the Noida University, UP, uh, this, uh, MIT is also holding many very important uh, posts, more than one. And Dr. Salimur is a distinguished physiologist and highly distinguished yogi. And you see the JC also. And he's a physiologist and a yogi. And he was the chief controller of uh, So uh, I know him for uh, more than three, four decades. And uh, he has done a fundamental, very important work in yoga, physiology also. And uh, so I welcome you, my Vikas. Thank you very much. Mr. Dr. Seto Raman, the Vice Chancellor, Dr. Ananda, my friend, and also a long yoga partner. Dr. Professor uh, Madan Mohan, and also very distinguished faculties, doctors, clinicians, students, and friends. It gives me extreme happiness, immense pleasure <coughs> to be here, and a very joyful moment for me to be here in this Balaji Vidya At this university, I have seen and I have known since I used to visit Pandichi earlier very often and particularly Dr. Swami Nitananda, father of Dr. Ananda. I have been blessed by him and uh, so now Dr. Ananda and Dr. Madan Mohan, they have been spearheading yoga in this particular area and Jimpal Pandichi and Dr. Madan Mohan has been a leader not only in India, but at a global level he has contributed to the field of yoga. <coughs> and I am happy that Dr. Ananda is propagating, continuing bearing the torch of his father, Dr. Swami Ananda, along with Amaji, as his mother, Sri Ramadhi Baba Bhavani Ji, so whom I have again had the opportunity of meeting her in Vigyan Baba just about a uh, couple of months ago when she had come there for the International Yoga Day. Dr. Chivas June, she was there along with Dr. Ananda. So I'm extremely happy today we signed a MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, between <coughs> this great institution, the Maharaj Vidya Beat, along with our Amity University. And to tell you a little bit about Amity University, is one of the young, exponentially growing, dynamic, uh, the educational group of institutions, right from preschools, schools, universities, which gives an opportunity for a person to enter like a pre-nursery into the and then get out as a postdoc. So you have the whole chain of education, a group of institutions in RBT. I am happy to be part of this. Dr. Ashok K. Chauhan, who is a student who built this institution, he himself is a scientist, yoga, yoga practitioner, and also Ari Samaj. He belongs to Ari Samaj, very active now. And he was also a student like you people sitting, studying his master's in chemistry. Then he went to Germany for a PhD in, uh, in the chemical engineering in Germany with a fellowship. So then he became a chief of an R&D. He owned an industry. He owned a group of industries. He became an entrepreneur. Every 15 kilometers in Germany, you used to have one industry of this, Ashok Then after 28 years in Germany, to come back. 
invest for social development through education, research, and innovation and philanthropy. So such a great person I'm happy to work with, and I'm sure that one day he will visit this university. Yes, and the meetings and best wishes for the success of our program. <clears throat> so I'm so happy to be here as a part of a meeting a group of institutions. Now with this preamble, let me uh, also express my appreciation to uh, the Vice Chancellor who will bring such wonderful minds here. I'm going to learn from you, <clears throat> not only share some of my research experience in the field of yoga, what I have been doing in the experiments and experiential learning. I have been practicing yoga for the past 40 years now. So not only experiential learning and experimental learning together, I am going to share some thoughts, experiences with you. And also take your wisdom for input for the rest of my career in the field of yoga. What's our strength today? Why every, every, every nation is looking towards India? It's because of many things. India is a place of wisdom. India is a place of knowledge. They were knowledge superpower. They are Veda, Supanishad, Bhagavad Gita, Yoga, Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani. All this existed in our country where there was no civilization elsewhere. When there was no civilization, people were living in jungle with no clothes on them. That time we had all this which is done. Veda, Supanishad, So our country was a knowledge superpower. We were having, we were radiating on it. People were coming to Nalanda University. Uh, we had the first university in the world, Dakshina. So we had many first, we mentioned zeros, we mentioned uh, pie charts, and also the Pythagoras theorem. Many things came from, even Einstein said, but for Indians, we would not have been able to talk to a beyond country. <laughs> that is the kind of things people just And And many things other people learned from our Vedas and bigger noble values. <laughs> In fact, the noble values idea came from our literature, ancient literature. So that is our country. That is our country. And so in this country, yoga was one of the systems. More than 5,000 years ago, yoga started in our country. So if we have been able to give it to the society at global level, it is yoga. It is yoga, which is being done in many centers abroad, many centers in India. So uh, that is why the United Nations recognizing that potential, they recognize yoga and then made it 21st June should be the International Day of Yoga. Like we have many days, but the International Days of Yoga is very important. So that shows the values, the whole humanity, the whole globe attaches to yoga. And the strength of our country is the human resource. All of you, all of us are the human resource, the biggest asset of our nation. So how we can help, how we, we become the lighthouse for the whole world to do, can we do yoga? So that is why this, is, this lecture is important. And this is important that we have, now uh, it's going to be 1.88 million. Now we are to 1.35 by about 2035 we have come to this level. Then the second is we have the demographic advantage, that is we are the youngest, youngest nation. And we have now almost 50% of people below the age of 55 years. Most creative, collective, constructive, innovative, creative phase of one's life is that. So we have that population here. So that is the other advantage. Uh, then we also have uh, the other thing is we have the natural resources. You name any climate. So if you want to have a temperate climate, go to Ladakh, you have this temperate climate. If you want to see a desert, go to Pakistan. You want a perishable condition, go to the east, northeast. And then so, we have all hot, humid, warm, humid, temperate, everything, subtropical, everything is alive. Which country has got that? Mm -hmm. At the same time of the year, you have all seasons. Which biodiversity? See, biodiversity, both uh, the fauna, fauna, flora, medicine, medicines, all these are available. So the next is biodiversity, very rich biodiversity. We have Northeast, Bible Hotspot, we have Western Gods here in South, Western Gods in the world. So that is the potential. We have natural resources, we have human resources, we are the largest milk producer in the world, we are top five in agricultural produce, whether it's vegetable, horticulture, or it is uh, the 
goes many, many things. We are at the top five. So then, how do we harness this human potential? And yoga helps. So the whole world is looking at how India can contribute to humanity development. Thus, not only wealth development, the development improves spiritual development. That is where the, our country will have an age. Other people may have physical wealth, monetary, economic wealth, but they may have also mental, intellectual wealth. They may have so many people, other lawyers, distinguished researchers, and so on. But in the wealth which we have, spiritual, which is going to be the winning factor in this, in this particular system. The winning factor is we have a combination of all this physical, mental, and spiritual powers we have. So that is why. How will we awaken the spiritual powers? How will we awaken the mental potentials through yoga? How will you keep yourself healthy health physically? Yoga can create that. So this 1.2 billion, 2.5 billion people can be transformed into a global asset, global asset by providing this holistic, the health and well-being and the potential realization of yoga. So that is why the whole globe is looking towards so India will become the lighthouse of yogic science. Yoga is a science. Yoga people feel is a myth, or is philosophy, or is psychology. It's actually science. If you do every asana, there is not a meaning. Even if just one component of yoga, yoga is not only asana. Yoga as you know, Ashtanga Yoga includes Yama Yama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyaha, Dharma, Yana, Samadhi. All the eight limbs are yoga. So yoga is the way of life rather than practicing, I practice yoga. That means I practice half an hour as much. So it's not practicing yoga. You have to live yoga in the way of life. So that is, then you are practicing yoga. Otherwise you can say I am practicing asanas. So that is why there is a difference. Yoga, uh, if you do that, it's a science. What do you want to say is, how is the science are going to talk? Do the science. If you do, like for example, some yoga mudra, for example, or ujjangasana, jagurasana, surya maska, when you do this, flexion, extension, muscular, musculoskeletal, neural, neural, all this stimulation occurs, proprioceptive receptors, and the cardiovascular receptors, or battle effects, everything gets activated when you do those. So it's a science. Why did they develop these the asanas? is based on a science. Similarly, when you do Ujjayi Pranayama, Vastrita, Kapalpati, it is all science. When you do this, you take a deep inhalation, hold the breath, exhalation. What is the science behind this? When you take deep inhalation, you are filling the whole of your vital capacity, the maximum air that you can hold it. Then why are you holding the breath, that Kumbha phase? Why are you having this? Kumbha phase is, one is to allow the carbon dioxide to accumulate in the tissue level and so that the peripheral circulation, microcirculation at tissue level improves because of this CO2, it changes carbonic acid. So this acid which happens at the tissue level, it actually opens up the pre-capillary sphincters and causes improved microcirculation to vital organs. So in that case, then you are throwing that carbon dioxide which you have circulated by gradually, continuously exhaling the air. So, science is a science. So, you have to be awesome. You have to be very meditative practice. No matter what, everything is science. That's what I'm going to do with this. How it is science? So, just to show you a chart, you know, a tip of the iceberg. This is what I'm going to do And many people are coming to India for seeking yogi knowledge here. So, we have tourism. Many people come to and they have a very big website, it's very active, and they have a journal. So I see right that many institutions are doing this. So people are coming to seek the yogic knowledge here. So tourism, for healing and rejuvenation. So it is not only for disease people, it's not only for patients. It's for normal people like us who want to be healthy, happy, and to the best of their ability to lead every moment of life in the uh, you need to have yoga. Yoga wants to practice every moment is a happiness, a moment of happiness. So there are yoga study centers is available in our in our country, the big way, 
more than 800 centers, veterinary centers are available today. There are many which I don't want to mention, but particularly here, in this place, you have uh, at Swan Itananda established their centers and uh, Global Center, which I used to come and enjoy the bhajans and we look. He used to radiate happiness around, and also the spiritual uh, radiation used to happen at Swan Itananda. So we have this classes being done. Now what is yoga? Yoga means to, to yoga. Yoga. It's a Sanskrit word. It means to bring comedy, to join together, to yoga. That is the meaning of yoga, which started from this. So we have physiologists, they like to interpret the meaning of body and mind, because the physiologists understand that. And then ask somebody who says self is the universal self. This is spiritual people who say, I am part of the whole. I am part of the whole. So, self with a universal self. And then go. That means go breaks that. Then, you can bring a Jiva Atma with Paramatma. So, Jiva Atma Paramatma and Jiva Atma. We, we came from there and we want to unite again with our, our origin. So, Jiva Atma and uh, Paramatma unification is also can be go. So, yoga means you can interpret depending on what you want and what you want to interpret. And this 5,000 years ago, it is uh, in India, but Patanjali was the father of yoga sutras. So he compared all the knowledge of yoga and then brought out the yoga sutras together. And we talk about this. So the first part of yoga is to have the physical the physical part, mental part, and spiritual well being. So gradually you want to achieve this. The first part, you want to be physically healthy. A diseased person to focus and look for realization. Suppose I have all the time a low back pain, cerebral pain, or pain in the mind, mind. You cannot achieve a higher level of consciousness. So the first level of being, preparing yourself to increase your consciousness is to keep your health all right. So be healthy. So the physical part comes in. Then mental, you can't dissociate mind and body. So you are, your mind, many diseases come from mind, not from body. So mental is a symptom in the body. That can be the problem, which are these in your mind. So that's why physical, mental, and the spiritual will be. Because as I said, we are not human beings looking for these uh, spiritual experience, but we are actually, we are actually spiritual beings who have come to this world to see what a human experience. <laughs> you remember that you know, all the problem is finished. Once you realize you are spirit, you are you are actually a uh, you, you are spirit not this body. Today this spirit is here. Tomorrow you may go to some other. So this is not me. Who am I? They raise this question in the previous discussion. Who am I? They say I am not Sarumati. I am a spirit in this body of so this this dilemma. So if you do realize that, then all your problems are solved. So spiritual illusion will come. If you will come, if, if you have that side. <coughs> so higher consciousness and moksha. Now in yoga, there are many yoga, many, many methods are doing yoga. The first is, if you do your duties properly, the teacher has to teach well, not just for the complete number of others are going to complete the service. But then real learning, teaching, learning, experience, like Gurukul, not just experience of your textbook knowledge, you can actually how to lead a successful, happy life. That is teacher role. Not just when you pass, get a credit, uh, CGPA of 8.9 or 9. It is not the role of a teacher. Is how do you bring him as a successful, good human being with values? And also, so that he becomes. They are, they are global citizens, they are humanity. That is the role of teacher. So that is, if you realize each one of the scientists, to do the best, to bring the best of that, that is Karma Yoga. Do your work, but then without attachment, oh, very good, if I do this, very good, promotion, very good, and we get an award, fellowship, membership, and academy. So then, you are not doing that, but you are doing Priya. And you are, you are actually expecting some returns. Then it becomes clear. You should do karma yoga. Karma yoga means do that action without expecting the fruits of the But it will come automatically action to reaction. It is 
young people, but then that is kind of important. You do your work, duties, properly, with full attachment, without expecting your turn. You know, there's bhakti yoga. You go to surrender, you completely surrender yourself to, to the Almighty. You do your work, everything. Lead the life as if, you, if I'm here today, there's a purpose. God is simply here. They grow blessings for me. I also want to reach knowledge I can give to you to give. So it's a purpose. So if you think that I never planned that uh, I should go there or sometimes I never go into so this great organization, give a lecture and meet all of you. So this all happens. So let's just surrender, totally surrender. Whether it is successful or not successful, it's okay if I have surrendered to God and do what He desires, what He she desires. <laughs> so jnana yoga, then the jnana, it's not just knowledge, it's actually realization. Uh, so jnana yoga is another type of yoga. That is, you reach through the realization of the purpose of the time. In, in Tamil, no? Avaya used to sing a song in my Tarkam and myself we used to sing together the mic together. So I will take the Abdul Kalam and we work very closely, very, very closely. We used to sit together, eat together, sit together, and also walk in the mobile gardens together. So we had this mention. So we sang one song, which is a name group. He practices, he was practicing uh, pranayams, he used to do some asanas, simple asanas, like Agrahara so So that song I will sing to narrate this, what is that jnana? The purpose of creation of life. Aridu aridu mani da na da aridu Aradiyum aridu koon kurudu se viru peshidu nengi pirattanu Koon kurudu se viru peshidu nengi pirandhalum Jnanamum kalviyum nayatthal aridu Jnanamum kalviyum nayatthakka Good. So that ability also you have to be blessed with. 
So we are able to seek that knowledge. But then what is expected if Dham and Tapas, that is important. You have to give, give, you know, Dr. Kalam used to narrate one incident, which he also wrote in the things of fire. No, he used to be a DRD chief, my chief, no? and he was, I was at center, I was the chief controller of R&D, and I was also director of the team. He appointed me as the director of two institutes, Defense Institute of Physiology and Life Sciences and Defense Institute of Psychological Research. I was together with him after as director for 11 years. Then I moved to headquarters as 10 years as the chief controller. I worked with him as well as So in that period, uh, he mentioned one incident, give, give, give. That was one slogan by which he used to narrate an incident. Whenever we launch a missile, you know, we said we have to prepare ourselves as a new deterrent against any other country. If you are powerful, nobody will attack you. If you are weak, everybody will attack you. So if we pass, to become a powerful body, we never be take it. Not to have hyperbolic uh, tendencies or approach, not to, to protect our country because if our neighborhood has got nuclear capability, if we don't have, all of us will be afraid that they could be nuclear power to happen. If we have a threat, if we have a deterrent, they will not attack. Because if they attack, you can attack. So we signed a self-monitorium of no first choose. So that Ram, going to the March, he used to take the blessings of Shakrachaya. He used to come all the way to take the blessings of Lord Shakrachaya. And then he was sitting with him. So very well, Shantajaya, he doesn't sleep much, he will sleep a little, mm. only he will do the lessons and talk to you. So, when Dr. Kalam was sitting, a very rich, a rich man, disciple of Shantajaya came there, with the Namaskar, and then uh, he blessed Swamiji, or Lord Shantajaya, blessed him, asked him whether he's okay, he said, yes, Swamiji, you have blessed me, with a rich wealth, I have business studying billions abroad and in India. I have a daughter, I have a son who is in the US and in Canada. And so, so then he says, Are you happy? <laughs> and he tears the whole of the eyes of that disciple. He cries, leaves. He said, You have been not everything, going in, going in. What is that you don't have? I don't have happiness. Yes. People come to me, they buy a rich, they get something from me. And uh, so my daughter reads once a week and talks. My son talks uh, after uh, one, one month, once, once a month. So there are no people really know me. They really, I, I feel that that deprivation, that happiness I feel, people are not real, showing real love. He said, what, what should I do for? And he says, why do you want so bad? Give, give, give. <laughs> give, give, give. So what means? We have to give one thing, not to expect anything to get back. You know, we all the time give to get something more. That in our way, son, I feel that our money, I become more than he will be. It doesn't happen, it happens. So we expect, and we tell our way, oh, that that very sambal was very tasty. So far as you make that sound. Everything is an agenda. Everything is an agenda. When you give, even appreciation when you show, you want to get more appreciation <laughs> to receive everything to get. He says, don't do that. You give, only give. That's what he says, not give. Give, give, give. Mm. Only give, 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 So that is what is nana. This is nana. To realize that, okay, how to be sure happy in every moment. Give respect, give love, well, give charity. And give words of appreciation. If somebody wants to listen to them carefully, this is all giving, giving the ears to a person who wants to speak mental health mm -hmm. problems. So all this is the jnana yosa. <coughs> then you have all of the shanta yoga, rana yoga, you directly approach the mind. So everything is different sets of yoga, but ultimately all the road will lead to the higher consciousness. So that is yoga. So yoga has got different uh, ways to reach there. And to understand that, you to, to understand science of yoga, you to understand two concepts. One is, we don't exist in this physical existence. Stoda Shari, Sukshma Shari, and Karma Shari. Our existence is in three levels. 
Similarly, heart rate variation is, is, is an aroused, alert, active state. You know, you do meditation, no? it is, it is, it's not totally docile and you completely sleep. It is actually you are getting into an alert mind. The next thing we, have, we found, see, normal people like us, we don't need to be, we are not going to be athletes, or we are not going to be so we need protein. Yes, sir. We should be able to come to our workplace. We have to be able to climb the staircase. We have to do some exercise. So you need that kind of some maximum level of physical efficiency. This is what is achieved by yoga. When you practice yoga, it's not going to make him a pratham runner or going to be a sprinter, but it's going to make you at some maximum level of exercise. Your efficiency goes up. This is what is shown. In our treadmill as well as bicycle of furniture, before and after yogic uh, uh, interventions, you were able to see the physical efficiency goes up. Particularly, your lactic acid build up. So that is the one which gives you the onset of aging. When you have the lactic acid, pyruvic acid going up because you have anaerobic metabolism taking over from your aerobic level. When you do these exercises physically for a long time, from the aerobic it becomes anaerobic. So all your metabolic processes is supplying the energy in absence of oxygen. So thereby in the process you have glycolytic processes, anaerobic processes leading to acid metabolic building up, like lactic acid, pyruvic acid, all of this, which in turn shifts your pH to a relative acidic side. And this is what is seen in this slide, that lactic acid buildup in the, in the in controllers like this, in yoga before and after six months of yoga, this is what is the profile. Whereas in control, uh, the control group, this is the one and then this is the, the after six months. There is before and after. What does it indicate? The lactic acid buildup is very fast in this. Whereas after practice of six months, there is a right word shift of the curve of the lactic acid buildup in time. And uh, with the submaximal level of workload, you will see the right worship. That means this point was reached somewhere here, this point of time. You are able to do the same exercise for a long time without getting into fatigue state. So when a person practices yoga, he's not discharging energy, he's not accumulating, he's breathing and supplying oxygen at aerobic level for a long time. So your accumulation of lactic acid, pyruvic acid will be slower. So thereby your efficiency goes up. Your physical efficiency can do much work. You don't get ready, looking at the patients, doing experiments. He's still cheerful when he comes up. Uh, you never come home like this. He'll be still cheerful because he's at the aerobic level all the time. So, this is what he's saying. It shows that there's a right for shift of the lactic acid buildup, thereby delaying the onset of physical energy, thereby improving your efficiency. Then we looked at all the biochemical profiles like blood glucose, cholesterol, total protein, lactic dehydrogenase, dopamine beta hydroxylase, volumin oxalase, all this indicate, I won't go into the details of each one of them, it indicates the relative hypometabolic state. Because all this is going to increase during stress. Your glucose is going to rise during stress, and your cholesterol, I mean, uh, it's also reduced over a period of time. So all this indicates that it brings the right kind of homeostatic biochemical profile in simple terms. Then what we did, we put the soldiers, the control group practicing physical training and the yoga group doing yogic exercises in place of physical training. We put them in the uh, hot chamber and then cold chamber. This is cold chamber experiments in which four degree, uh, the temperature in that room was 10 degrees with no clothing. No, don't do it, only short song for the soldier. So he has to be there doing exercise, not sitting there doing exercise, some maximum level of exercise. Then at that time we were measuring uh, what happens to the soldiers. So we were looking at their core temperature, one is core temperature, which is shown here. Yoga group maintained their higher core temperature as compared to the control group. And this is possible, even though both of them showed decline, but relatively, yoga group maintaining a high core temperature. And how it can be achieved two means. One is you conserve the heat, heat conservation by producing cutaneous vasoconstriction. The blood vessels constrict. So the warm blood doesn't come to the surface, it 
derives within the core. So it is heat conservation through cutaneous vasodilation. This is one method. The other, other one could be heat production. Increase the heat production to compensate for the loss. So we were interested to know, physiologists, that we wanted to know whether this had maintenance support and which was achieved by heat conservation or heat production. So we looked at the mean skin temperature which was not different from control and yoga group. So it was, it was the same in control and yoga group. That means this maintenance of high core temperature was not achieved by heat conservation, but by heat production. And there are two methods of heat production. One is by shivering, you can produce heat. And shivering will give heat. The other is non-shivering metabolic process by which one can produce heat. So which way? was these practitioners of yoga, the soldiers, achieved this capability. So when we looked at this, we found that the ventilator, the shivering actually started much later in the yoga group, yoga group of subjects. That means, and also it was of a lower intensity, so we measured them by oxygen consumption. Because when you do this, oxygen consumption goes up by shivering. And also we measured the EMGs, integrated EMG, from different muscles, back and so on which will indicate the electromyographic pattern, which will indicate the shivering when it started, what was the intensity of shivering, which will be seen by EMG. So we measured them, and we found that this was achieved by non-shivering thermodynamics, because shivering started much later, and was of a lower magnitude. Then we went into from physical to psychological level. So we measured anxiety, depression scores, concentration level, and vigilance, and a few more, quality of life and so on. So anxiety, both state and trained anxiety, it comes down after six months. Control, the initial three months, six months. In control, uh, this is the pattern. Depression, again, this, this is the pattern in the control group that the depression scores come down. Concentration increases. Vigilance scores, alertness of the mind increases. So there is a lot of psychological benefits besides the physical benefit, there is also psychological benefit. So this is on one side, the physical and mental capabilities, cognitive capabilities goes up. Practice of yoga. Practice of yoga means the way which we have done for soldiers. Then we looked at can it be a prophylactic, particular diabetes. We are worried that whether India will become a diabetes capital. We don't want that to happen. So we looked at why the yogic practice will it reduce the incidence of diabetes by improving their glucose tolerance. So we looked at the TGT in the group, in control and yoga group. You find here this practice of yoga, this is the very initial part. The fasting blood sugar level itself comes down. And then the glucose handling ability tremendously significantly improves. So this is what you can prevent the, the uh, diabetes. So the body gets protected by this practice of yoga towards diabetes. Then we did curative aspects. So this is on the prophylactic curative. So we took essential hypertension, which is as one of the case, case clinical condition in which there is a tremendous the psychological factors involved. Your diet, intake of sodium, everything is positive factor for this. Angiotensin in converting enzyme, very angiotensin. All that is very, very much involved in the system, including catecholamines. <coughs> so we took 40 patients, divided them randomly into two groups. One group was put on a table, tilt table, tilted 70 degree head up, head up. The patient is just lying hypertensive patient. 70 degree head up, passive tilt. That means his muscle pump is not active, so there is a cooling of them in the lower parts of the body due to gravity. So this is one, one group receiving this, then 35 degree head down. So the patient has to do only lie down passively without acting his muscle pump, so it lies down. And then the other group did exercise yoga asanas, which involves a postural tilt, like for example, Ardhana asana, repeat the term, Sarvanga asana. So head down tilt. When your head is down, leg is up. Head is down, leg is up. Similarly, Bhujangas, Dharuras, Surya Namaskar. And so many exercises we involve this head up tilt. One is head down tilt, the other is head up tilt. Head down tilt, head up tilt. So
So there are two groups, one does passive too, the other one is actively doing asanas, which involves a posture routine. Then we measure the battle reflex. That's one of the hypotheses of a group established. If we have the established hypertension, essential hypertension, because 90% of hypertension we have the essential hypertension. The other one is organic, we have 10%. So we took essential hypertension patients, in which what we found, the first thing to be knocked down in these patients is battle reflex. So we had in the carotid sinus, the battle receptors, which respond to the phasic radiations in blood pressure. That means, suppose I lie down, suddenly get up, so your battle reflex immediately senses the radiation. And suddenly there's a pouring of blood in the lower parts due to gravity, venous return decreases, cardiac output decreases, systolic BP tends to fall. So this is detected by battle reflex. We then it asks heart to pump faster. What are little pump it faster so that your pressure doesn't fall? Cerebral perfusion is maintained. And then immediately based on that section, don't allow the pouring to happen. So this is normal physiology which is activated by baroreceptor. This goes down in the hypertensive patient. First thing to be knocked down before you set the etiology of hypertension is to make this sluggish. See, a uh, sentinel, Chaukita, standing guard on his words, you know, uh, <laughs> security. He goes to sleep, everybody can come in. So that is what does. This fellow sleeps, then you are, so you will take whatever if it is, stress, catabolomates, everything tries to establish But you wake him up, you throw everybody out. This is what we the hypothesis we need for. Can we throw this fellow out by yoga practice? Can we activate this language battery? That is the experiment. So when you do this catabolism, passive to, all very good is asana. What you are doing? You are acting the battle receptors to be dilated. Because when the pouring occurs here, as there's the activation of battle receptors, because it dilates, so battle receptors become active. When you do the head down tilt, you are allowing the blood to pour in the head and neck region, stretches the battle receptors, it again activates. So what is activation? There is deactivation. Activation, deactivation. So you are making up that fellow who has gone to see by doing this repeated tilt, so that this chavita will throw the other factors, geological or agent factors. So this is what we did by the tilt experiment. And in that other group, what we found, even here, there was a significant reduction. But the results achieved with the, with the yoga group was tremendously high. This is what I showed in this study. See, this was the hypertensive. We took moderate hypertensive. We didn't take serious hypertensive. Systolic, you see this, and uh, this is a mean arterial pressure. When it comes down, it comes down, and uh, then this is doing tilt. So there's a sluggishness which is seen. It takes long time to correct, but then after six months of practice, you find your blood pressure itself comes down, basic blood pressure, steam blood pressure, and then it is stable. Even when you do the tilt, it becomes stable. That means. You have woken up the battle reflex sensitivity in such a way that it corrects. Then we look on to the other factors like any angle, plasma, RF, and how I it in the same patient before and after. You see this before, the, after 10 days, 12 days, even 12 days, you see very significant results. Then it comes down. And also the urinary uh, catecholamine. So catecholamine's level comes down. Then we also measured any angiotensin activity, EEG. <coughs> but, I'm, but I'm just showing some illustrative slides to show what we have. The last part of my presentation is on the coronary artery disease, which is again multifactorial. The one is sedentary living, the other one is dyslipidemia, leading to the deposition of cholesterol and all the other, uh, the, the, the LDL and PLDL. All these are a problem, so that is the next part. Third is stress. So these are the three risk factors of coronary artery disease. Major risk factors. So we wanted to attack to a lifestyle intervention. Stress was taken care of Raj Yoga, so by Raj Yoga meditation. We gave low fat, high fiber diet, which is 15% fat, including hidden fat. So that was the diet given to the patients. So it's a regular fiber rich diet which was given low fat, high fiber diet. And then regular aerobic exercise, every day morning and evening walk, half an hour, half an hour walk. So this is what we gave as an intervention to those patients. So we took 524 patients. This was done along with the Mount Abu Global Hospital Research Center. 
and that is uh, Dr. Satish with uh, Dr. Reddy, who was associated for us from there. And then we had the Global Hospital Research Center and DRD together. Dr. Kalam himself visited along with me, I think, five times there to see the experience. So that shows his uh, involvement in yoga. So we gave vegetarian, uh, high fiber, as well as low fat diet, aerobic exercise, brisk walk, and stress management through medication. And we did many parameters. I'll just run through which are loading with the information and summarize this slide. Like we did EEG and uh, so all these parameters we have for which uh, I will not again so go through this. Again we looked at the lipoproteins, homocystin, which is very important for the disease. How does it change with the practice of yoga for 24 months, two years? This this is done for two years. We follow, including coronary angiograms and show you some of the angiograms. Then we looked at plasma insulin and leptin, the diet we are now looking at, because that is one of the important factors for this disease. So we looked at that leptin and also glucose tolerance, which I showed now as a prophylactic within this year can correct also. Then we did uh, uh, DHEA, cortisol, cortisol is a very good indicator of stress, stress hormone, inefficient catecholamines, this catecholamines. Then we did plasma serotonin, the pleasant hormones, endorphins, beta endorphins, and serotonin we also measured. This has been published in uh, our first Indian Heart Journal. Now we are submitting to Lancet, the larger part, the randomized trials. Then we did melatonin, again, this is a pleasant hormone which we do see by the biorhythms regulation. So we looked at them, how does it shift in terms of the amplitude, the, the macrophase of this. We looked at in the biorhythms. Then we measured the coronary angiogram. You see the control group is actually progressed from 52.6%, it became 72.45. The control, the progression of the disease. These are on conventional medical management. This is the control group to see the conventional medical management. There we give conventional medical management and lifestyle intervention. So it is not substitute, it is supplementary. Then you see in the patients who receive the lifestyle intervention, yoga meditation, <coughs> you see how it decreases from 7.85 into 47.0. See, actually Dean Arnish, in his experiments, where he did that in a rigorous control in terms of keeping them in the hotel, all this participation, they were given. You can't do that in a normal population. So we allow them to be there, but he involved the spouses, suppose if the husband is coronary heart disease patient, we call this Dilwaras. We call them as Dilwaras and Dilwaras. So he, he took them and then involved the spouses as a part of the system, so that the food has to be prepared by her. So if she doesn't know what is low fat in her diet, we can't succeed. So we did it in a realistic environment, and like Dean Ossie did it, a very, very strict, rigorous control. So in that, he showed only arrested progression of the disease, but we showed actual regression. So this was the first experiment in which actual regression was demonstrated through our experiment, uh, which is seen here. And again, another patient, from 89% blockage, and it became 41 point zero. This was seen by three cardiologists independently, blinded, so that they won't know which is the control group, which is the experimental group, and also see independently opinion by them. So we had angiogram, total patients were 524, and then we had two groups. Now how does it work? <coughs> how does it work? First is everything starts with your thoughts. Good thoughts. If you have good thoughts, that's the starting point. If your thoughts are your mind is controlled, the thoughts are okay, and everything else will follow. You have you are feelings, attitudes, emotions and actions, ultimately leading to action, and then habits, everything will automatically follow. So your thoughts are important. This is what does this yoga meditation. When you do this, first is your mind is controlled. So mind, it leads to that matter. Then you look at that. All this ultimately influences in the trillions of cells what you have. So then you convert them into physiological by then your cellular, molecular, genetic, epigenetic, uh, uh, the um, factors ultimately lead to benefit.
condition so we gave that like water then we also did other conditions just to look at how does it help in in people like uh, various conditions like science like the way it goes by a few experiments and that which is different so we used uh, then also we used the affective functions anxiety <coughs> so now i i have to conclude now hope happiness and quality of life also increase as beginner experts there's a significant difference in this yoga practitioner you buy it schools actually we should build yoga not only at chapani area but should go to the schools so that when the whole personality is getting developed when the whole body is being prepared for the adolescence and then come to adult stage and that stage we should focus so that it becomes a part of their lifestyle So this is what is important. The efforts have been made, but then it has to reach that larger cross section. And I'm sure that India will lead, so that even at the global level, it should go to the schools. This is what I think. Actually, hospitals. We must have in every hospital there must be a yoga and natural health center, which should not only help the patients but the family, the caregivers who come there. They should be exposed to yoga. So yoga should become a wave. Should become a movement, so that every local corner, everybody does yoga. Yoga started in our country. How many of you in the class, in this particular group, does yoga? At least uh, asanas. Right. So happy. So you are really the messengers, messiahs of yoga. Spread this. Yes. Spread this, and it will certainly reach the larger cross section. So in a hospital, everywhere, I, I wish you were centered. All India should be established a yoga center, yoga and wellness center, and it is not only for the patients, even for the normal people, the families who come. They should know oh, if I do this, will it happen? Put all posters, brochures, distribute them, and let this let this university or university, and that's how let it be a model university where all patients, suppose coronary artery patient, you put a, a first stent, and to reach the losses to not to occur. Lifestyle intervention. Otherwise, it's going to come again. <laughs> so you are not removing the causative factor. You have no symptomatically a blockage. You will remove any perfusion or any proof. But the what it causes, the losses is still there. So you have to approve that. So that, but unless you want the patient again to come to give a review, then but then that's not the aim of a doctor. The aim of a doctor is to treat and make him healthy and happy. So this is what our hospitals should do. No, we will still get many patients. They will come. They will come for each one. It should become health center rather than hospital. It should be, it should be health center rather than hospital. So let us believe that in all hospitals, we must have a yoga and wellness center. And even corporates, corporates, your doctors must practice, your nurses should practice. So in the other hospitals, executives should practice. So this is how we prevent disease. So let us. Create a happy world, and let let this party change take the lead role in this being a yoga center from the Gita to the Arunachal is there, and then we have Chikmagal is there, and we have uh, um, what the other one? Arvind 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 is there. So I think all this uh, Arvind Arvind is there. So we have all this right and the ambience. So let let this become. A B center. Now, final message: Promote and popularize yoga. Yes, yoga has become a global, yes, our country has been given the responsibility. You should realize that responsibility is just not a declaration of 21st June as Yoga Day. Okay, happy one that day we meet, organize some functions, functions, and forget about it next day. That is not the purpose. That means we have a big responsibility of promoting yoga. The humanity. So each one of you should realize that, should realize, and then propagate that. So that is promote, popularize, and also on scientific basis, science and the way of life from life from the cross sectionals, all cross sectional society, including students. Networking of yoga centers is very important. You work in silos. That is why you know why it is important today. We want to have force multiplication. Benefit, mutual benefit, synergy of minds. So, like that, you should network with each other. 
become a one force, Indian force, to propagate this yoga. So connect with each other and promote. Networking is very important. Preparation and circulation of wide spectrum of information, communication uh, materials is also very important. Training materials. And formation of international committees with representatives from active yoga centers. So we should now take a lead role to become as a global network and consortium rather than Indian. Because Kurumbaka, we have believed all this India has believed. Not just only now we talk about global village and so on. This is existed, this existed. Masudeva Kurumbaka concept existed right from the origin of our country. So that is what we should realize this published of international companies. Promote further research and understanding of beneficial effects. And uh, so it should become a global yoga wave and movement. So let us create together. The tool is MOU and also with all of you. Yoga is so universal in its principles and so holistically beneficial. It is possible for any person, young or old, religious or agnostic, to embrace and enjoy the practice. This is not told by us, but told by us. Thank you very much.